And joining me now to talk more about that and his options is Ian Wallach. He's a criminal defense and civil litigation attorney. He joins us live from San Diego. Uh, Ian, uh, one thing's a certainty. I've been in that airport. He's got to be getting tired of that place. Uh, where do you think he goes from here? Well, I think right now he basically has to wait until Russia, you know, considers his new application for temporary asylum. Um, if Russia, you know, gives him, you know, the thumbs up, then he can take a little time, he can slow down, and he can wait and try to make sure that his, his trip uh, to the Latin American countries is a little smoother, is a little um, less fraught with concerns that he's going to be interceded. Now, uh, you just heard Martin mentioning that uh, it might be a nice poke in the eye from Venezuela to the U.S. There's strained relations there. Is that your sense where he'll land? Uh, it is my sense that it's one of the places of his land. In a statement, he said he wanted to visit, you know, each of the countries. He made a pretty bold statement saying he wanted to visit their leaders, even though there wasn't an express uh, invitation. But he wanted to visit each of the countries that has offered to uh, to grant him asylum. I think there's seven now. Um, I don't know if he'll ultimately end up in, in, Val in Venezuela, but there's, uh, you know, there's Nicaragua, there's Ecuador. I do think that's certainly where he's headed, and he's going to stay there as long as there's both support for him there and, you know, as long as there's the public support for him at home, and certainly while the criminal complaint uh, is pending back here in the U.S. Ian, this is a guy who obviously knows about spying and surveillance and that sort of thing, so I suspect mm -hmm. he probably also recognized the difficulty in trying to get from point A to point B. How tough will it be for him? Yeah, he's got to go through proper legal channels, and he's got to make those channels and uh, create them in such a fashion that the U.S. isn't going to want to intervene in such that it, you know, really offends other nations. He's going to have to do it lawfully. He's going to have to follow, you know, the you know the proper permissions to leave Russia if he goes to Venezuela, the proper permissions to get in there, and he's got to hope that the U.S. decides they're not going to intervene at one point and just sort of you know intercept him and bring him back out of fear of of the sort of reprimands that they would receive from the global community for doing so. He has uh, provided deep embarrassment for this administration, and uh, of course, President Obama had to answer to some complaints from allies in Europe about uh, possible spying allegations that uh, emerged right. because of Snowden. Um, and at the time, President Obama pretty much said, you know, everybody's doing it. Well, if everybody's doing it, there has to be a 29-year-old Snowden just in about every country. So. Uh, are countries reluctant to grant uh, him asylum, given the fact that they may have a guy working for them doing the exact same thing and may say, well, maybe I should spill the beans? Yeah, you know, I really don't think that's the reason I, I, that anybody would be uh, afraid of granting asylum. And I think that the Snowden, if, if there are individuals like that out there, Snowden's story may, you know, give rise to those occurring elsewhere. I, I think more importantly, this is a, you know, a campaign that was about a government that's supposed to be transparent. So it's sort of, it's supposed to be, we're supposed to live in a transparent government. So it's sort of frustrating to, to see this, this um, anger and this sort of nationalistic anger against Snowden when what he's doing is historically, you know, American. The uh, State Department went to great pains to say that he is not a human rights activist. He is not a right. whistleblower. How do you view? Though that? they're doubting they ever said that. Um, you know what separates someone from a from a hero and a, and a danger is really uh, whether they're willing to put their own needs in front of uh, you know the greater good needs in front of their own and whether you agree with the principles that they're ultimately trying to pursue. Uh, I, you know, I do agree with Snowden. I like what he's trying to do. He's not only trying to bring about change, but he is bringing about change. Just today, the Department of Justice issued new guidelines as far as, you know, what they will and will not do as far as accessing media information. That's a step in the right direction. So I can see how a lot of people think he's bringing about harm, um, and I understand that. Uh, I do think that he's bringing out a better good. He's showing what decisions are being made on our behalf behind closed doors that we didn't even know were being made. And I think that's terribly important information, and it's, it's a brave and important act to bring that information to light. Well, if you can, Ian, try and give us a little bit more insight for our international audience into this hacktivist kind of mentality that he has. Of course, we're hearing that about Manning as well. There, there are a lot of these young people who feel uh, kind of as though that this is kind of their duty. Yeah, I mean, it's it, uh, basically that's been his idea is the whole time he says, listen, I'm, you know, this, the law, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment of the U.S., Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which, you know, which isn't law, but is, is a good goalpost, these set forth the values that he really believes in, you know, the values to a right to privacy, the values to a, to a you know, a free and open system of justice. And he's saying, look, these, these were being undermined and they were being technically rendered legal, even though they're unlawful practices in secret, and I want to bring it to light. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily uh, an activist mentality. It might be more of a, of a journalistic mentality. Some people say it's anti-patriotic. Other people are saying it is patriotic. But, but what he's doing is saying, listen, I had information. Uh, I had access to information about you, about a general public that you didn't know 
uh, was occurring, and I'm going to bring it to light, not to harm anybody, not to hurt anybody. I'm just going to let you guys make decisions as to what to do with it. And uh, as, as an American, I, I, I'm happy that someone does that. Ian Wallach, thank you so much for joining us from San Diego. Certainly appreciate it.